Uh, I'm happy to be here with you uh, this time. I, I have a story that I would like to share with you. Uh, we live in a very, very strange world today where many things seem to have lost their direction. I thank God that we live in days when we have books like the Bible to read because the Bible will instruct us in many, many, many ways. But there was a time when in some parts of the world there was no Bible. And yet there were people who really would have wished to have a society that had values, not a society that just did anything they wished to do. Now, many people agree today that uh, those days, people used stories to instruct, to guide, and to shape mainly the lives of young people so they can grow as responsible human beings. Can you imagine of a world where everything is flat? Nobody can tell anyone else that this is wrong, this is right. Time when everyone does what they please. Have you ever, can you imagine what kind of life people could live when things are like that? I have a story here that depicts what I call moral decline that invites God's judgment on the world. Because there are times when you ask questions, why did it do things happen the way they happen? You know, like people are asking today, what does this coronavirus attack really mean? Everyone is asking these questions and, uh, you know, nobody seems to really have clear answers because no one has told us exactly why this virus has descended on us. It's ravaging people like flies. It's killing everyone, you know, and, and, and nobody knows when it will even stop. And then people are asking, what could be the cause of this? Now, let me tell you what. I may not even have an answer myself, uh, and I cannot uh, uh, put myself into a trap of thinking that I can explain a... Uh, clearly and truthfully why this coronavirus has attacked the world at this time. But all I know is, and you know too, that this world is not behaving well. Yeah. Morals have collapsed and the people are just doing crazy things. I can't even begin enumerating things that we are doing today as a society. It's just the evil and I just don't know what God is thinking about us. Uh, more, more of decline, where values have no meaning anymore, where people are just doing what they want. People have even reached a place where they're inventing scenes which are unthinkable. I, 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 I sometimes imagine that even the devil might be surprised about what he sees today. You know, I do remember a saying I used to hear some time ago when people would say that a student can actually become better than his teacher. In other words, you can, you can train your student and he excels in the, in the area that you taught him about until he is better than his professor. I am I'm, I'm wondering whether the devil 
is not afraid of what he is seeing human beings capable of doing today. The evil, I don't think he knew when he started this game with the human beings. Now, listen to this story. Now, I may not say much after the story, but I will leave it for you to judge yourself what it means to you as an individual and what it may mean to the whole world as a society. <laughs> it's a story of a young man. <laughs> it's a story that I, I find it hard to even begin telling. And, and I've told this story a number of times in the past. And I remember one time I was telling it to someone. And then at some point, this, this man rose up. He was sitting down and he, he stood up. He rose up and said, Pastor, I don't think that guy arrived where he was going. I said, don't go ahead of me. This is my story. Just listen, man. Now listen. <laughs> now listen. This is a story of a young man called Judo. Life had become unbearable for Judo in his native city of birth. He had finished his university education. He had looked for a job for a number of years without success. And you know that makes someone very desperate and frustrated. As he ventured into checking about opportunities which might be available elsewhere, in other cities in his country, people talk to him about a city far away where jobs were plenty. So Judo started thinking about this city far away. He had no money for fare to travel to that city because they told him it was far, far, far away. He sat down and worked out a plan that would get him to that city. The plan was simple. He decided to use his feet or his legs to walk to that city because he just had, doesn't have money for his fare. He can't use anyone's bus. He can't use the train or any other means of transport that was available. So he said, I'm going to walk myself to that city. So one morning, he set out on foot for that distant city. They had warned him that it would take him not less than eight days of walk. He had no money in his pocket except one dry loaf of bread which he had snatched. <laughs> Listen to this. He had just snatched this loaf of bread from an old lady who had just walked out of a small shop. He got away with it because the lady was half bright and he could not scream for help due to her advanced age. That's you know. So he didn't care what the poor old lady suffered. He didn't care to know whether she had more money to buy another loaf. All he was interested in was to get something to eat on his way as he traveled himself to this distant city of opportunities. Judah traveled for a whole day, but the people he met along the road warned him that he had not even started. So he kept walking through the most of the night. He had finished eating the dry bread he had snatched from the old half a blind grandmother, and he was already starving. 
That's, that's the problem with this life. It doesn't matter what you eat and how you get what you eat. After a while, you just start suffering hunger again. In the middle of the night, he saw through the dark some light spark through the bushes on the left side of the, of the road. He, he didn't expect to have any homesteads around this place. He looked a real jungle. But interestingly, he saw some light that was flashing through the bushes. And he guessed that there must be life there. So, what does he do? Judo, helped by the dim moonlight, followed a narrow path that was marked by the shadows of the night. He munched at a small grass thatched hut at the end of this narrow path. He called out, to see if there was anybody in there. A faint voice answered from inside the small hut. He, he, he explained himself. He talked about his expedition in a very, very polite way. And who is he explaining to? He hasn't seen the person yet. But at least there is this voice that came out of the small house or small hut. And of course, he knew someone is in there. And so he was explaining his story to the voice. He explained to that faint voice inside the hut that he was on a mission to fetch medicine for his dying mother in a distant city. Now, you know that is not true. <laughs> yes, as much as I know. But you know, when you start bad, you will end and progress bad. Don't mind about my language here. I just want to use the kind of language I hear talked these days. You start bad, you progress bad, and you may end up bad. His mother wasn't, wasn't dying. He, he, he was seeking for job opportunities. But he's trying to impress whoever is listening to him from this little hut here. He explained that he had run out of bread and money, which he had when he left home. And you know what he's trying to do there? Just trying to win sympathy of whoever is in the house. Now, inside this small hut was an old, old man, very old man, who lived there forever. Nobody remembered when he, lived, he never lived there all by himself. The old man sympathized with Judo, just as you probably would have, you know, sympathized with him. I also want to guess that I would have sympathized with him. The old man doesn't know what he has done, where he has come from. He didn't even know that he was lying to him, that he was trying to get to this wonderful big city to fetch medicine for his dying mother. The old man sympathized with Judo and shared the little humble meal that was still cooking on his small fire between three stones. Those of you who are of African traditions and culture know how we used to cook our, our food on three stones and, 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 and you would feed firewoods 
in between the gaps. After eating, the old man asked Judo to reach out for his jacket or coat that was hanging on the rafters of his small hut. Judo didn't know what that meant, but he rose up and reached up for the old man's jacket that was hanging on the rafters and he gave it to the old man. The jacket was so old, so old, that it was holes everywhere. It took this old man many minutes to trace the pocket that he needed. And Judah wouldn't have helped him because he too wouldn't know where the pocket was. Holes were all over the jacket. And probably it was the only jacket he had. So at last he found the pocket. Put his hand inside and he came out with ten shillings or maybe dollars, maybe pesos, maybe euros, maybe francs, whatever currency you want. It's a long time story, so I don't know what currency it was. <laughs> but at least there were ten pieces. So the old man invited Judo to assist him in counting. So they together counted the pieces. And they found there were ten. The old man asked Judo to help him count the second time. And so they went over the exercise one more time. And this time when they reached in their counting to the ninth piece, something very interesting happened. The old man told Judah, son, I felt for you when you told me where you're going. I know that city. It is far from here. So you haven't covered anything yet in terms of your journey. You still have a long, long way to go. And you know, I just like the idea that you are just taking this trouble to pick medicine for your dying mother. I like young men like you. So take the nine pieces. It will help you on the journey. And this one remaining, I will return it back to my pocket. And tomorrow there are guys who keep coming around here. I will ask them to go and bring me salt from the shops on the other side for my food. So he returned the one shilling back into the pocket of his uh, jacket. And Judo took the nine and put them into his own pocket. By this time, the food that was cooking there was ready. And so the old man removed the food from the fire. His back was too stiff to even stand, but he struggled. Put the little salt that he had and mixed it well with the food and they shared it. As soon as they finished eating, he told Judo, Judo, I don't think you know how far this place you are going to is. Don't waste any time now. Let's lie on this mat. It's a small mat I have. I don't have a bed. But we'll share it. Make sure you go to sleep so that you can have the strength to, to, to continue with your journey tomorrow. So they went to sleep. 
This old man was tired. He had a long day and his age again was advanced. So immediately he went to sleep. Judo made sure he will not go to sleep. He refused to go to sleep. He was monitoring the old man to make sure he had slept. And when he heard that he was snoring, Don't ask me what he did. You can guess by yourself. Judo rose up. Reached out for that jacket. What do you think is following up? The one only shilling that remained. That shilling that the old man said he would send the boys who always come to his compound to go to bring his sword for him. And sure enough, he removed it. Put it together with the nine that the old man had given him at night. This is the point where I told you when I was telling someone this story, this person rose up from his seat and he said, Pastor, you can be sure the young man did not arrive where he was going. Now, he didn't know, he didn't know this story. <laughs> I, knew, I, knew, I knew this story from beginning to the end already. But this guy, before I finish the story, he told me that. I said, man, why are you running ahead of me? Wait, let me tell you the story. But he was so disgusted. He said, oh, was he a human being or he was a devil, that young man? I said, wait, man. So anyway, he put the shilling, the only remaining shilling into his pocket together with the nine. And he tiptoed so that he doesn't disturb anything to awaken the old man. And so he checked out. It was still dark, but he braved the darkness to make sure that he disappears with the every shilling that this old man had. So he traveled in the dark until the day break and continued with his journey, continued with his journey. And by around noon, or maybe past noon, it was very, very hot. So he came by this tree beside the road, and he found a whole big crowd of people who were protecting themselves from the hot sun under the shade of this big tree. And he himself had suffered a lot under the sun. So he joined this group there. And they, as soon as he joined them, you know, they were talking and everybody was telling their story. And so they quickly asked the young man, said, hey, you, and where are you going, sir? For me, I'm going there. Uh, yo, what, this is why I'm traveling. And what about you, sir? Oh, he said, you know, Guys, you know, I'm on this journey to that great city there. I'm going to look for job opportunities there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even uh, some of these young men you see here are going to the same city. All right. They were talking and talking and talking. Guess what? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, from nowhere, a rattlesnake fell on the chest of this young man called Judah. And when the rattlesnake fell on him, the first thing it did was to bite him on the neck. Now, those of you who know, or have read about the rattlesnakes, this is one of the world's most poisonous snakes. Its bite is fatal. Beat him on the, on the neck. And everyone was shocked. Said, what? Where has it come from? 
This tree is not known for snakes. We have rested. People have rested under this tree years after years. Man, what's wrong with you? And, and you know, Judah could not start telling this story. Right there, I think he knew why he suffered this. But you know what? As these people were in commotion now, wondering what do we do to help him out? We have no medicine for snake bites. What, what can we do? Does anyone know herbs here which we can apply on him? Then they see another group of young men running with the sticks. They have sticks in their hands. They are running from the direction where Judo just arrived from. And so when they arrived there, they asked these people, they said, tell us, us, have you seen anyone here or who has passed through here? We, we, we have someone who just stole one shilling from an old man in our village after he had given him nine shillings last night. Then he, 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 he did something that we, we, we can't believe any human being should do or can do. He, he, after the old man had gone to sleep, he followed the jacket where the shilling was, removed that one shilling, and, and disappeared with it. That man is not far. Have you seen anyone? Uh, these people didn't know this story. But you know what? Judah himself. Judah himself. And this time he's actually about to die. He spoke from the ground and he said, my brothers, don't look for the man anywhere. I am the one. You are the one? Are you the one who received the nine shillings? Yes, sir. Are you the... They said, wait a minute. Then you followed the, the only remaining shilling and you took it also. He said, I did it. Now, where, where is that money? He said, he couldn't even see well now. The poison of the rattlesnake had saturated all over his body. But he pointed to his jacket and he said, the 10 shillings are in this jacket, in one of the pockets. And you know, this group of young men immediately picked that jacket, pulled out the 10 shillings, put them in their pocket. But did they spare him? They were so hungry. Using the sticks they had, they finished what the rattlesnake and left. And the young man died right there under that tree. Is, what story is this? What does this story tell you? Now, can you imagine if many people in our world today act like judo acted in their many different versions it may not necessarily be taking the one shilling but treating people who have done you good so badly uh, you know this is a story that tells you many many things how do you Live your life in this world. How do you deal with God himself who has given us all the shillings he had and then just asks for a portion of the very things he has given himself and then you find that most of us try to exercise tricks here and there, you want to con him 
of even the little that he asks you to return to him. Think of people who have blessed you in your life. Have you heard stories today of these children who grow up and they start killing their parents so that they can take the whole estate that their parents owned or they, they own because now they have grown strong. They are stronger than their parents. And there are others who even kill their grandparents so that they can take all their money. They can get all their credit cards and their bank accounts cards and they want to go and withdraw all the money. And, and, and there's nothing that is not being done today. Now let me tell you something. Judah's story could be your story. Judah's story could be my story. Judah's story could be the story of many. And then you want to ask me, Pastor, why has the coronavirus attack happened? I would ask you the same question. Why did the rattlesnake fall? Thank you very much for listening to me. Tell me if my story blesses you, if my story teaches you something. Unpack it more yourself. And if you have ever acted like judo, the best thing you can do, the best thing I can do is to repent of my evil and asking God to forgive me. If our world has sinned in the same manner like judo, nation against nation, tribe against tribe, church against church, believers against their pastors, pastors against their believers, There is no shortcut. If we do not repent and repent quickly, I can assure you of one thing. Judgment will fall on us. It has already started. Rattlesnake after rattlesnake. Coronavirus followed by floods. Floods followed by tsunamis. Tsunamis followed by hurricanes. Hurricanes followed by earthquakes. Earthquakes followed by things that I may not be able to exhaust listing. God bless you.